Hello everybody, Martin here, and while the first part of this GeoScatter tutorial series focused on the introduction to the tool, in the second part I'll show you some awesome features that it offers and it regularly save me hours of work on my projects. Once again, if you want the access to all of my Blender environment creation knowledge, just head over to CGBoost where you can find my robust course but if you already know the fundamentals, this add-on is just priceless. All right, so let's jump in. Okay, so here I have this little scene made with the wonderful Scatter Pro and the vegetation add-on assets. And in the scene, I also placed this little ancient column. And now what I want is for the assets to actually avoid this collection. And for that, there is this awesome option in the proximity menu and you can activate this object repel and in it you just set a specific collection for the assets to avoid and let's set the same repel option to other scattered assets in this group so let's use the grass and the rocks as well and now whenever I duplicate or add anything into this group the scattered assets will automatically avoid it this is very useful indeed. And you can also adjust the settings of this repel option. So let's have a look at them in this a little bit simpler example. On a separate collection here, I have the sphere. Let's actually switch to shaded view so that it's faster. And now in here, in the collisions, I set the repel collection. And now I can set the size of the area where the assets are actually repelled. And let me show you the sphere in a wireframe mode so that it's more clear. And you can see that the inside is not actually repelled, only the edges. Uh, but you can correct that with this option here. And then you have various other attributes that you can choose to be influenced by the repel option. So for example, we can have the sphere influence the scale of the scattered assets. Or for a very special use, you can adjust their orientation. I like to use this, for example, if I want to create traces in assets like grass. You can adjust the normal and the tangent rotation and then either move the repeller object in space or if you want to create traces that stay there, you simply create a new shape key and then keyframe it in time so that it actually grows and extends through the field. And this way, very simply, you can simulate traces of objects moving through the grass. This example you may know from my previous CG Boost tutorials, and I got this environment from CG Trader and scattered on it these wonderful 3D little trees from the forestation pack. And on it, I can demonstrate another great feature of GeoScatter, which is the abiotic menu. In this section here, you can actually create various rules for scattering your assets based on the model of your environment. In this case, we, for example, will definitely use the slope, which removes the trees from the vertical areas, but retains them at the horizontal ones. This is actually how trees grow in nature, so that's a very handy feature to use. Also, we have the elevation here, so just cutting off the trees from the very highest areas of the mountains, and you can adjust the transition and also the height, as well as influence the scale and density here. All this is pretty self-explanatory. For some cases, I also like to use the curvature setting here. And in this pull down menu, you can choose from the concave or convex method and just a little image here so that you know what the difference is. And in combination with the elevation map, you can achieve some very nice results with this, especially for large terrain meshes. For very curved or spherical meshes, you can actually use this orientation, abiotic distribution. And this works as you know it from the dot option in Blender, where you basically just drag around on this sphere here, and it will adjust the orientation area where your assets are spread. A little feature that I didn't highlight sufficiently last time is if you have a color map of your terrain, and then, for example, you have another map where the rivers are indicated. You can actually plug this map into the culling masks here and then control where your assets are spread with it. You can see that it effectively got rid of the trees on the river regions. 
Another feature connected to the various maps that you can use for culling is actually in the extra section of the add-on. And here, with this little plus button, you can create various weight maps ranging from elevation to slope, curvature, and also this watershed, which is very nice for creating areas where water would naturally gather. And then you can of course use all these in the culling mask section. What I also love is that all of the geoscatter assets can be animated. And in this wind section, there are in fact two attributes that you can animate. One is waves and the other one is turbulence. And let's now activate the waves and see what it does. There's quite a few options, but the basic ones are quite simple. There is the direction, then the speed and the strength. And since these assets are so very optimized, you can play with it directly in the viewport. And even with dense scattering, the animation will still be fluent. And when it comes to animation section, here you can actually change all this to loopable. So let me, for example, set an end frame to my scene. Uh, let's do it like 100 frames and set the end here as well. And if we let it play now, there is no visible jump in the animation. Everything is loopable in the duration of 100 frames. And I find this feature absolutely amazing for creating little loopable scenes for your environment. If we then switch from the waves to the turbulence, uh, you can see that it's more like a chaotic movement of the grass. And in my opinion, it's actually best utilized when it's set together with the waves. And again, we can make it loopable and set 100 frames to the end. If I then copy this setting to all the other scattered assets, yep, they move nicely together. If you plan on making animated natural sequences, uh, there is nothing that ruins believability more than not having your assets move at least a little bit. So this feature is super powerful. And that's it for the second part of this tutorial series. And in the next one, we'll have a look at some advanced features, including the latest additions. Until then, stay creative, my friends. Martin out.